This week's edition of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by TradePub.com, GoDaddy.com, and Netflix. Time for the medicine. Cheers! This does what again, exactly? Huge buzz. Oh, good. See things no one else can see, do things no one else can do. Real things? As real as uh, Lopan. What more could a guy ask for? Oh, a six demon bag? Terrific, a six demon bag, sensational. What's in it, Alex? Uh, wind, fire, all that kind of thing. Here's to the Army and Navy and the battles they've won. Here's to America's colors, the colors that never run. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. Good. I'm not, uh, not scared at all. I feel kind of, I feel kind of invincible. Yeah, me too. I've got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Three ram dudes with nothing better to do get abducted by the crew of the Starship Alpha 2. They're from the planet Q, which, due to a space-time loop, is stuck in 82 and must be rescued. They need our heroes to discuss the latest news and give their reviews of games and movies, too. Sure hope you're not confused. We swear this is all true. Not just the premise to The Totally Rad Show. Episode number 38, I'm Alex Albright. I'm Jeff Canada. And I'm Dan Trachtenberg. Now, Totally Rad Show is a weekly dose of all things rad. We go down to the local marina, get the biggest, baddest boats, scrape off the rad barnacles, and make some sort of rad gumbo. Ooh. Yeah. Barnacles Didn't think you were going in gumbo? In, in our gumbo. All right. You know why? Because they've sailed the ocean blue. They've seen pirates. <laughs> Santa. Aqua Santa. Speaking of sailing the ocean Santa. blue. <laughs> yes. Speaking of sailing the ocean blue, uh, our background comes from a completely different continent. It does. The conference of South Africa. <laughs> yeah. Lex from, uh, from Johannesburg sent us this really cool design yeah. background. It's super fancy. I feel like this is like on like those like like one of those like super fancy MySpace like exclusive. Oh yeah, the yeah frames really well or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, like the super like well designed for, template. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. With lots of blinking and flashing. No, 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 no not I'm the sorry. horrible ones. Oh, you mean the not really MySpace. good ones? <laughs> Every yeah, time yeah. I think of South Africa, I think of um, my heart. No, I think of uh, Power of One. Have you ever seen uh, the Power oh, of One? Oh yeah, the no. boxing movie. Great. It's actually directed by it. John G. Avildsen. You would love it. It's a really oh. good boxing it's movie. Guy, guy did Rocky. Oh wow! Made the you movie. mean Sylvester and Stallone? And the score is, is Hans Zimmer's like African yeah, no, no, before no, no, Lion good. King, that kind wow. of thing. Yeah. So, you know, um, while Chloe we're thinking Cricket. Stephen Dorff. While we're thinking Lex for the awesome background, we also have another big thank you. Oh, we got our first holiday gifts. Yeah. Unbelievable! Uh, this, this is crazy. Uh, Anakin and Diane sent us all. Holiday presents. Yes. I keep saying holiday because one of us is like Hanukkah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate we got it on my holiday. Yeah. Oh. And I feel like they thought that was conscious of them to say, well, if we send on Christmas, it's late for damn. We send it before everyone gets yeah. it. So thank you for thinking of Kwanzaa for yes. me. I really appreciate yes. it. Totally uncalled for and wonderful. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you so much, guys. It was actually really kind of flattering because it was like, I mean, we get stuff, you know what I mean? Like yeah. people will send us stuff like, oh, we should check this out, check this out. But this was like, Wrapped. Presents wrapped individually. They gave amazing. they gave us all uh, um, Wow gift cards, and Steve doesn't play Wow, and so I right. hooked him up with Microsoft points. It's just the nicest thing ever. Yeah. So, so thank cool. you, thank yes, you, very, thank you much. very much. Shall we get into awesomeness? Yes. Okay, so this week in movies, it's The Golden Compass, yeah, uh, based on a series of books by Philip Pullman. Um, it is, uh, it's directed by Chris Weitz. So Chris Weitz mm -hmm. is part of the directing team with his brother, Paul Weitz. Mm -hmm. They wrote American Pie, okay. or they directed American Pie. They didn't write it. They directed American Pie. Oof. They wrote and directed 
about a boy, Great. which is like yeah, one of my favorite movies of all time. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a good movie. Um, followed that up with A Good Company and then American Dream. <laughs> that was the Dream. one with the guy from that 70s show and Dennis, Dennis Quaid. Quaid. Yeah, okay. yes. I never saw that. It was all right. Le big letdown because yeah. I thought I was going to get about a boy and. Oh, God, no. Right. Yeah, and you got, you know, Christmas with the Kringles and, and whatever. And I think the that, that was like Paul White's <laughs> doing, directing those. Yeah. And now we have Chris White, White's writing and directing his own a flick. A completely different kind of movie. Totally. I yeah, mean, this totally. is like. Yeah. It is. It's a fantasy film. Mm -hmm. um, it's Lord but, of the Rings meets Harry Potter. Yeah, kind of. It's, uh, how would you describe it? It's like. Well, it follows this. It, it basically tells the story. There, it starts off talking about alternate uh, parallel universes. And yeah. that the thing that connects the parallel universe is this dust. And that there's <laughs> one, you know, that the, these, these scientists in this one alternate universe from ours. Um, learned how to tell, sort of, sort of foresee into the present um, um, using this dust. And they created these things called alethiometers, which are basically truth devices. Golden compass. Golden compass. And and there's only one left, and then it's the story of this little girl who's the only person who can actually read these alethiometers, and her sort of adventure, you know, sort of goes on from there. And, and they have like, fantasy. they have pet... The, not that, pets, but like part of them is, a, is an soul. animal their companion, soul. Their, their soul. soul. Right. Yeah. In Which our is, world, our soul is inside us. In their world, their soul is an animal form that walks alongside them all. Which and they're speaking genius. animals. That and, was like, when as soon as that started and that first line came up, I was like, wow, that is a totally unique, new, like I would never have thought, you know what I mean? Like Right. So the movie, anyway. the movie sort of follows in the footsteps with the success of Lord of the Rings mm. and Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. We've, we're getting slews of these movies. Um, do you think it's just another one of these movies, or do you think it could be a new trilogy like <clears throat> Narnia and Lord of the Rings? Well, Alex. I have to say, when I first went into this movie, I was like, you know, Narnia was okay. It was fun. I've watched on a plane, whatever. Um, Love the Lord of the Rings, you know, but I was sort of like, okay, well, this is just the next thing. I heard the book was really good. None of us have read the book. Right? None of us yeah. have read the book. Unfortunately. Um, yeah, I did buy the book when we were in London, but I didn't haven't read it yet. Um, I, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this movie. It's a little slow. It's a little bit of, like, lots of setup at the beginning and stuff, but I thought the sort of animal companion stuff was really unique and, and awesome. I, I was blown away by the CG. Uh, or the CGI, um, the Ian McKellen's bear guy, Yorick. I mean, I, you know, there were times where I was like, that's, they just trained a bear. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, clearly it was CG. Um, it's definitely more violent than I thought. This is not really... Lots of people die in this, and people die in a very gross way, and I will say that the first time Yorick, the bear, fought with the humans and just basically runs in and goes, brah! Smash and kills a guy, and I was like, "What the fuck movie am I seeing?" And it's even worse because when someone dies, you see their, you see soul, their soul evaporate. Explode. Yeah, it's amazing. It, but and I thought, that's such a horrifying yeah. concept. Yeah, mm. no, like I know. Their soul is dying. Yeah, it's very. But during those battle scenes, when it was just like soul popping and people were dying, I was like, "Soul popping." Cool. Sounds yeah. like a rock band. It, was it seems like if you so, really think that through it yeah. for a child. Whew. So I'd say for me, you know, it was it was a, a pleasant surprise. I also haven't seen the book. It may be a disappointment if you've read the book because I don't know what they had to leave out or not. But I think it was a, it was overall good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Sam Elliott, come on, that guy. He uh, just looks at the camera, and I'm like. Amazing. I agree that I, I liked it. Um, I, I felt like it was one of those movies I walked out of. I, I felt like I'm, I understand now what people who saw the first Harry Potter movie and hadn't read the book felt like. Yeah. Of like, yes. I feel like I'm missing a lot. Yes, yes. And I walked out of that movie going, you know, I wish I had read the book because they cover so much in such a short amount of time at the beginning and it's just like you have to accept this you have to accept this because we don't have time to explain it yeah i'm sure in the book it's all fleshed out and it makes yeah, more yeah, sense yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> as i was leaving the theater i heard people who really are into the book talking about it and they were talking about how there's a lot to be made about the girl and how she's a liar but that's kind of a good thing like they talk, call her silver tongue oh, and it's like her almost her superpower is that she is just a really great liar and so a lot that's of i felt there's a lot yeah. of depth to the story that I didn't get. Yeah. And just they just can't do it in a film. Um, I agree with you, the CGI is spectacular. Yeah. And there's very few shots that don't have CGI right, in them. Yeah. I mean, cost, any actor that's on the screen is going to have an animal with them, and it's mostly CGI. And they never, I mean, when I was watching it, it was pretty clear they never used real animals. Almost never, yeah. yeah. 
Um, I would also uh, say that it's. I think it's cool as a fan of fantasy. <clears throat> I think it's really cool that we're getting movies like this five years ago, you know, or more. We would never have. Been, they would never have been able to sold this concept as a film because yeah, yeah. it is so complex yeah. and there is so much uh, fantasy, so much fantasy elements to it. Hmm. Uh, I love that, but. I didn't ultimately think it was a complete experience. It didn't feel like a complete experience. It felt like, it felt a lot like I was I was playing an RPG, like a oh. like a Square Enix game. Oh my god, I had that exact freaking feeling when yeah. they're on, at the very end with the boat, where they she's like going through the characters that now yeah. are fighting with them, and yeah. I was like, she like you picked up quest? the new, you picked it's up like the new. She went on a side yeah. quest yes. and she, she got the that bear. Right. person now she, in now her the party. Bear with her. Wow, exactly. That's so funny. Very, I totally had that exact cool. moment. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, director Tam. I, um, I, I the trailer. I did not think I was gonna like this movie from the trailer. Yeah. I was I was sure I wouldn't. Um, you it, actually said that before right like, we went in. Yeah, I felt like I felt like if Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, you know, this would be Crawl. You know, it's like uh, or D, or Dragon Slayer, which movies I like, but you know, second they feel yeah, second bananas. Um, from the beginning, I was like, oh, this is dope. I, I, I loved the, the demon, yeah. soul, animal, companion. Yeah, yeah. This is just how it is in their world. Um, I love, it's it, it kind of like Children of Men is the science fiction where it took it very, not, it's this, where it took it very seriously. Yeah. It's not shot in the same way. It's not shot by making this real, but it makes fantasy feel more natural mm. um, and serious and adult. Yeah. Um, it's not whimsical like Harry Potter. That being said, after the first third, I really lost it, uh, lost my interest, and mm. it just sort of felt like things, I didn't understand the world, like when they go in the western frontier land with Sam Elliott, like, I was like, I'd love to understand this, and nothing really spectacular, scenes just sort of happened, I didn't feel any major suspense or peril or conflict. Huh. And the, la wow. the final, it ended in a place, where it's like, I, I thought that was the middle of the movie. I yeah. thought that was the middle action scene. And I was like, that's the last action? It, it was just, he's not a director. I don't wanna say he's not a director, but it, you know, when y'all watch Transformers or even the Die Hard movie, it's like yeah. they've seen action films and they're trying to, or adventure movies, or whatever, and they're trying to do the scene different. This was like, it was written in the script as a battle happens and he shot a battle. There are shots of people fighting. There isn't like, he, the thing does this really cool thing. There's a moment that's amazing. There's a couple and there's, a, there's a couple moments, but ultimately, it's just shots of people raw and dying and raw and dying, not yeah. like a cool way to show that sequence. Yeah. And, you know, it's stock, very stock to me. I would imagine huh. that if, if any of us had read the books, the movie would seem so much better. Yeah. Be because like I felt when I saw Harry Potter, I was filling in the gaps that the movie didn't hit. Exactly. And I was going, mm. oh my God, I'm so glad I could finally get to see this character that I've imagined yes. for so long. Yeah. And I wonder if that's a problem <laughs> with these type of movies that they're almost just fan service. They're huh. almost just, just there to, to fulfill that fantasy of the person who read the book who wanted to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's I don't... interesting. Well, I also <clears throat> felt like I... I, I think for me, I, I definitely felt the sort of peril of it, you know, that Nicole Kidman's character hated her. And yeah. the way her, Corella I really like- In the beginning, dude, there was a great moment. Yeah, where she was like, pet. can I take her please? You know what I mean? Or, oh, the moment when where he she grabs, grabs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the pet grabs the other thing. Oh, dude, and her pet was a fucking asshole. It never Just came saying. back for me though. All that setup felt really- Are you kidding me? You mean that the, the pet like was always sort of like, always looking around and like, yeah. you had no, to No, I mean later her on in the movie that seemed to, Nothing else ever happened that was quite like the setup. Okay. Well, I mean, I can, I can get on that train. I, I just, for me, it, you know, I, I thought it was beautiful. I thought that the, the bear fight scene mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah, that, well, yeah. Yeah, but the whole bear exchange where she, you know, is trying to, like, figure out how to get out of the situation where she's presented by, you know, basically imminent death. You know what I mean? Any like, movie that has Derek Jacobi <clears throat> and Ian McKellen in it, Good enough for me. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> my two, one, two of my favorite actors in the and world. And Derek Jacobi. Derek Jacobi. He was he was very very small part, but I feel like he's set up for later movies. What was he? But who he was, was the head of the Magisterium? Oh yeah 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 yeah. 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 I mean, and he's... who? How do you? Where do you know him from? I don't know. 
I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it's going to sound like a hoity-toity actor talking, cool. but but he he's he's played Hamlet more times than any living human being. I mean, he's he's RC guy. He's a he's stage just, guy. He's a stage guy. He's done tons of films and tons. Any of that movies. we might any more mainstream stuff or not? Um, I, yeah, I recognize him. I just couldn't put my finger on what he's been in. I'm blanking on. He looks like something the, you would know. He looks like the guy yeah. from Fifth he's Element, but he's not. The guy he looks like Ian Holm. Yeah, Ian yeah. Holm. Yeah. but he's not Ian Holm. They're contemporaries. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, moving on. Yes. Uh, what we did see in the beginning of Golden Compass is the trailer for much anticipated Speed Racer. Correct, Amundo. Um, so, this is. Wachowskis. This is the Wachowskis. Uh, so, Matrix bound. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Matrix. Matrix bound. again and again. Right. Uh, yeah. They're giving us Speed Racer. What did yes. you think of the trailer, Alex? Not excited at all. Zero excitement. If I could have less excitement than zero, I would have that much excitement. You could have negative. I have negative 100 <laughs> excitement. I, and maybe it's because I was not a Speed Racer fan. Like, I didn't, I, that was not a cartoon that I watched. I just mm. sort of knew of it. Mm. But to watch this, I was like, I don't even know what it is. And, and I'm, I think, talk about a, fan, a film that's just fan, you know what I mean? Like, seeing that whole family, and I was like, well, that's John Goodman dressed up as Mario from the Super Mario Bros. Uh. movie. And, but clearly, that's going to get... Somebody was like, oh, he looks exactly like, you know, Papa Snarf and Barf. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Papa Snarf and Barf. Well, yeah, I don't know the name of the character. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, the only thing that was sort of... Titles. Right. <laughs> the only thing that was sort of exciting was, like, some of the car race stuff. But then the car race stuff looked like, you know, uh, Tim Burton's Willy Wonka, the bad parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, J Joel Silver's touting it as car fill as opposed to the, yeah. you know. Kung fu. Yeah. It's just, to me, zero excitement. I don't know about you guys. I actually, this is, in lieu of, or in light of my rant about trailers Correct. last week or the week before, whenever it was, yeah. uh, this is what I would want out of a trailer as far as what a trailer is. It teased the movie. I, I don't have any idea of specific <laughs> What the movie is or why no, no, no. you see it? Uh, it, it. It's an interesting, yeah. it is. You don't know the beginning, middle, and end of it. Exactly. You just know the vibe. I just know the vibe. I'm with you. And I, I really, yeah. I'm really kind of excited about this movie. Um, I, I totally see where it could be terrible. Yes. But. Thank you. I like, <laughs> it seems like they're making, taking real risks. Yeah. And they're, they're taking that uh, Sin City 300 green screen thing yeah. and hyper coloring it. Well, and, which and, is a really interesting yeah. thing to do, especially taking this property, which, like you, I don't really have much of a tie to. I never. I was more into it in the early '90s when that "Go Speed, Go 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 Speed" rave song came out and it sort of had a resurgence of Speed Racer. Yeah. But I was never really into it as a kid. Yeah. Now, and me too. I got into it when I was in. It was on MTV, and I yeah, used to watch right, it exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I never really even I've got into the story episode, of it. So. But I feel like it mm -hmm. could be something for kids that is really interesting, visually interesting. Yeah. And it, it takes. It, it takes um, um, a live action movie and really embraces that cartoon aspect. Mm -hmm. I dig that. So. What do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I feel like both of you, I, a combination of your feelings. It, 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 I, I'm worried that it's just like they had this new, I mean, Matrix, like they had this new technology and they really showcased it. And this is like this new camera that they're using, whatever, and it's all, you know, all shot on green screen. Um, it feels, I, it feels like anime, you know? And, right. But The Matrix came from anime. This, like, you can see, like, you know, anime also has, like, speed lines? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, even Voltron would have, like, Or, like, between and two characters. Yeah. yeah. They had that thing where, like, it was a character, not a two-shot, it was, like, two singles with a separation. Yes. Yeah. I feel, Moving. <laughs> now, yeah. I thought, train. Yeah. I thought what was incredible about The Matrix was the way that anime action sequences Guys like, leap up in the air and they become slow and then they, because it's animated, like they just made you feel the yeah. way people moved yeah. in animated form. And they were able to translate that into live action and develop right. this way of shooting to make it like that. And this seems to be much more literal. Like they're making yeah. a lot, and I, I loved how they sort of got, created this feeling that you could only create through drawing something and, and animating it, it in your own speed and right. time. And they were making that Real. real, yeah, and now it, I, I don't. It feels very cartoon. I mean, the I, I didn't get to see. The, I like the idea of the car fu, and I saw one element where maybe that the car racing stuff will be awesome, but. I like that they're not showing that to you very much in the trailer. They're yeah, not selling but that. I wish I had a moment where like, like the moments where it's like that looks sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. like. I mean, and, and, any, any other teaser trailer that I saw that yeah, the teaser trailer for Matrix. <laughs> Show and fair. We 
used to go to these computer shows all the time as kids. One of my favorite memories growing up was my dad taking me to Oakland or San yep. Francisco, yep. going to a computer fair, thumbing through the like five and a quarter inch floppy drive yep. uh, disks yep. of um, of shareware, trying also, to find games. And it was also one of the only places where you could actually see the graphics cards that were out because oh, yeah. before the internet and before big you know shopping like. Best Buys and Fries. There was no such yep. thing as Fries. Mm. You could. There was very limited. Places. There were no. You could go and see the exactly. new ATI card, the new Nvidia. There were no the computer stores. Card. I mean, I remember Radio Shack would have some software, but bare, never... there was no. That was the only place. It, I mean, computer culture was an underground yeah. thing. It was. It was not mainstream yet. How long has it been since you've been to one? The last time I was at a computer, probably sixth grade. My only memory of a computer fair. Two things. One, some dragon talk or something where a guy was speaking yeah, into a microphone speech. and would write, and that was like Back to the Future 2. It was like, <laughs> holy shit, that's amazing, that's the future. And where is that now? I don't know. It's yeah. probably it's probably gonna be there. It's in there. Let's and it's the same guy yeah, still in yeah. there. Yeah. Well, let's go buy some tickets. Yeah. Bluetooth rear view mirror. It's, it's so you can see who you who you just your ended speaker. your call with. And your speaker. Because you're looking in the rear Dude, view mirror. I love no? that. This one has... It's embarrassing. Not for me. Man? I swear. Not for me. Girlfriend. It's not for me. <laughs> Do you have any non-clear bags? <laughs> hey, Alex. Want a calculator? Uh... Let me calculate the percentage of not using that. They've done wonders with miniaturization nowadays. Steve, this is, you know the in Goonies, when uh, Sloth is watching the pirate thing, and he's thinking, yeah. this, this is the movie. Oh That's my right. god, the Wu. The Wu? That's the Wu, that's the Chinese. It's this little cross makes it stops it. many in a lawsuit. <laughs> Do you guys want to get the uh, 1998 Thomas guy? Dongle. Feels like it's Be not. Able to find out where we are. If we ever time travel back to 1998. <laughs> so we just got out of the computer fair in Pomona. And the one thing we learned is they're not what they used to be. You know, just it, we're walking through, and it's like one of those things where you feel like. You want it to be these great deals, but the bottom line is that because of the internet, because of places like Fry's, yeah. I mean, They're I would unnecessary. rather, this is unnecessary. I'd rather walk through Fry's because I can get more selections. Just And you don't have to pay an entrance fee. And it, you feel more kosher about it. Uh, Back in the day, there were like multiple buildings, tons of stuff. You oh, could yeah. get lost in there. This is very small by comparison and just kind of sad. It is, it's a little sad. It's like a little bit of our, Actually, you should say they did have the cool, which none of us, cool, not cool enough for any of us to buy, but Bluetooth rear view mirror. Yeah, that was the big thing this year. I, I did not think that was cool. I think <laughs> this year's con, it was all about the Bluetooth, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. the thing that sits on top of your That mirror, was this year's Bluetooth. dragon talk. <laughs> dragon speak. All right, guys, let's punch this out. Turkey! <laughs> So the last few weeks of video games have been a glut of AAA titles. We have had absolute wall-to-wall -wall playing games, playing games, playing games. We've been we, oversaturated. We yeah. have. Let's just say that. We're going to do a lot more news today because there's a lot of news items that we've uh, we've overlooked. But before we do that, there is a game that all three of us played a little bit of. Yeah. And it's, I just thought it was interesting that we should, we should check it out. It's a PlayStation downloadable game called Pain. Mm -hmm. And basically the concept is... Um, <clears throat> From what I understand, it was actually a marketing idea of doing sort of jackass the game. The idea is you're a... Hmm. a, a Dude. Yeah, you're a, a Gen X, <clears throat> yep. you know, okay. in a slingshot, and you have this city that is fully destructible, and you fling yourself off into the city and try to cause as much damage and pain to your character as you can. Uh, it's $10. It's a downloadable PS3 exclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex... You played, we, we all played through some of it. Yeah, I, um, it, it really reminds me of Burnout. The, sort the of, crash mode. Yeah, the crash yeah. mode in Burnout. Oh, crash where you're mode like, Burnout, yeah. Yeah, no, that's totally what it is. I forgot about that. Yeah, where you're like, I'm going to try to just get my car to like launch over and do this weird thing. Um, 
we saw we watched footage about when they were talking about like I think it came out. Yeah, when we they talked about, about it three. way back in the yeah, day. Yeah, eighty three. And I saw it and I was like, stupid. Mm -hmm. I'm so not interested. Um, but to the game's credit, a lot like Burnout, it's actually quite enjoyable. Um, I didn't play. I played it for probably about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. So I don't think it was like uh, maybe there is a point where you go, okay, done, got yeah. it. It's a downloadable game. It's, it's a, only but it's a downloadable game. That. Yeah, and and for the time, for the amount of time I was playing it, it was really fun. And we we played. I played it over at, at Jeff's house, and you know, trying to like get yourself up and doing like hitting the box and trying to kind of get these like pads and stuff. And then I hit the train. Yeah. The first time we were in through the tutorial, and you were like, "Holy crap! I've always tried to hit the train. I never made it." You know what I mean? Yeah. And my favorite thing to do is to flip flop back and forth on the street and let cars run over you because it adds a lot of points. points. So, it's, so it's way more fun than I thought. And what the physics you, is really cool. Um, I'm the opposite. I thought it was gonna be a lot of fun, yeah. and, it, and it wasn't. I mean, it was it was fun. It was fun at first. Uh, playing the main just destruction mode, like, eh, I, it, I thought it'd be like Tony Hawk in a, in, a, in a different way, like creating combos and bouncing over this and hitting that and da -da. that happens sometimes. And there's you try and you, the thing is swinging, you try and hit it, but you do, and then you just fall, and that happened, and you get points that don't seem to ever. Add up, add up, yeah. and and then I did the mime game and mm -hmm. didn't didn't do well at first and kept trying and then finally got a silver in it and I was like, you know, and that was fun a little bit, um, <laughs> but the mime game is there's a mime hanging there and you grab onto him and you fling him into things that right. are goal oriented. Right. Um, I yeah, I mean, if it was free, if it was like downloading um, uh, Geometry Wars, mm. I would have been like, this Geometry is awesome. Wars isn't free. I'm sure it was five bucks. That's true, but you can play the demo for free. Yeah, which well, I played can... the shit out of before I bought it. But <laughs> that's why. But like, it's it's a ten dollar game. It's not. A t it's not. This is not worth. Crash mode was. Uh, now you said it was. I love crash mode. Yeah, me too. I had way more fun playing crash mode and burnout. Well, but than also, I, did in this I game. think you nailed it. That there's not. There's no. Mom the momentum ends so quickly because mm -hmm. you're just purely falling. With a car, you can kind of get continue your momentum as you're careening into stuff. And they try and correct. They try and do things to me. Yeah, like and bike. I and I did. And once you learn that, like shake to fire and then yeah. jump. I I, yeah, I thought that some was interesting chains. that they kept adding new little bits in the tutorial of like, okay, now you can grab onto stuff. Now yeah. you can hold exploding things and throw them. That was kind of interesting. Well, what but did then you, you go think overall? City overall, it, it, like you said, it's it, it's actually it's actually fun. It's it's it, there's some fun stuff happening with. Um, the, uh, what is Steve, Steve What the doing? hell are you doing, Steve? There's a cobweb. Oh. Uh, All of a sudden, we look over and Steve just goes like this. I was like, I can't talk he's like on Steve acid. is doing. He's on acid, and he's having a. I know, experience. he's like, my pen, right. I can see the tip of my pen. Bottom line is, it's, it, I didn't think it was worth 10 bucks. If it was yeah. 5 bucks. Oh, well, it's like, I played many, his copy, hey. so I was like. How many times, how many days, you played it one day, or did you pick it I up? I played it one day, and I was like, I, I, I played through the monkey mode, and I was right. like, you know what, there's not enough goal oriented yeah. stuff, and there's only one environment. It needs more environments. And I'm and sure they're going to add those as downloadable content. They already added, like, 99 cent extra characters, which is way too much money. Anyway. Oh, dude. For All right, again. so we'll move on. Um, Newsies? Newsies. One of the, the, so the biggest, biggest news in the enthusiast gaming press right now um, is the <clears throat> issue of the firing of Jeff Gersman from GameSpot. Uh, if you haven't been following this story, it's kind of made its way all around all the gaming websites and enthusiast press. Um, it has not really hit the sort of mainstream press yet, but oh, basically the idea is that um, this <coughs> writer for GameSpot, um, executive editor I think he was, um, and reviewer, he'd been there for over 10 years, and he was let go kind of mysteriously, and people think it has something to do with um, a review of Kane and Lynch, an IDOS game, that he gave a very poor score and a very scathing review to on the site. We don't know, no one really knows um, the real reasons he was fired, if that's the accusations are true or not. Uh, and I don't think it's our place to even decide that or not. I, I think that legally they can't reveal and we have no idea what really went on. I think the interesting thing for me and how I kind of want to frame our discussion of this briefly is um, what it means to have a score for a game, what, what it means to have huh, that's sites that advertise <clears throat> um, you know, the products that they're supposed to be objectively reviewing, and how that affects your trust in them. Yeah. And I think that the most interesting way to, for us to come at this maybe is to talk about why our we, show. Why, I was just about to say, I was like, yeah. when you bring up 
I hadn't thought of it that way is that we've always had the conversation of, well, we sort of stopped having it after we kind of made a decision, but, you know, our big conversation was, <clears throat> should we have a rating system? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you know, even with the movies and stuff that we talk about, there's, there's always that thing of, like, how do I describe the feeling I have? Like, how would I say this to a friend where, you know, they go, should I go see The Mist? You know, what do you say? You right. don't, you don't, nobody says, well, I don't know. It's like an eight out of ten for me. Yeah, so right. you decide. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like you don't do that to friends. I was just right. thinking of yeah. making that joke. Right. I mean, like. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. It's sort of a seven point five. You know, on my scale. Yeah. You know how my and scale our, goes. And our average is a right. twelve. Yes. So, so yeah. for the whole <laughs> show, it gets 12. Up twelve out of ten. <laughs> That's the average. Yeah. Um, so you know, we actually came to the decision early on, like, let's not have a review. Rating system. rating system. Let's just talk about the show honestly. You guys can decide. Right. Like if you're if you you know if your friend went and see the Golden Compass and was like, wow, I wasn't expecting anything. It was great, and you know said all the things that I said that you said that that Dan said. You would make your decision on the, the that movie. Yeah. You know. So, but I think that does bring up a big issue with you know games companies sponsoring the sites that talk about games mm -hmm. and how do you keep that stuff separate because you know doing what we do even doing what we do we have sponsors where it's like things start to bleed over and it's a real it's a real balance and we're on a very small scale i mean you know yeah. something like comparatively to to, to game spot you know yeah, what I mean? or, like, or even i mean you think of like somebody uh, you know entertainment weekly or oh some God. some you know yeah. giant publication yeah what do you um, think yeah, yeah. Actually, i'm curious you about what you think, because you said specifically, like, what do you think giving a score meet does, or mm -hmm. whatever, and what, what, it's not something you have. Well, it's interesting, because, like, Alex yeah. was saying, we've had a lot of people suggest to us that, that it's, it might be a good idea to, at the end of our reviews in both movies and video games, go, well, I think it's, um... Blah. Blah, right. right. A blah Sum everything blue. up in a, either a number or some sort of quantifiable amount. Yeah. And, and like you said, I don't think that that... I think there's plenty of places you can go for that, but it 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 doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Because then we get this stupid fanboy discussion back and forth of like, well, you gave this a nine and that an eight, so you think that is better than this, or you know, and and that was four years ago. It's like, well, but that it it, it becomes meaningless. Yeah. Because it's a scale based on what, you know. Yeah. And I think that I've always been more interested in. I've always wanted our show to be more like Charlie Rose or it, more of a discussion, you know, yeah. rather than some sort of... Um, Finite number. Yeah, like, here's my review. I mean, I'm, I'm interested, like, last week, Mass Effect, I, I found this, the game disappointing, but I was very interested to hear why yeah. you guys didn't, didn't or right. whatever. And it's not about me justifying a number that I attached to this game yeah. because it was an experience that I had that I enjoyed. Um, yeah. Well, that's or, the other thing. I mean, I enjoyed like, having the yeah. experience. Yeah. And I mean, also, not necessarily enjoyed the game. For me, yeah. it's hard because if I was giving numbers to games, there are genres I don't like. Right. There are things that I'm like, you know, I, this just isn't my cup of tea. I, I, I'm not going to give it a 5 out of 10 just because I don't really like that type of... But you can have that conversation and people get it. They're like, well, if that is your cup of tea, you know, it may be a good game. And people can glean that from me going... I hate this kind of game, and then they go, well, I like that kind of game, so I'll check it out. You know what I mean? But also there's an issue, and, and I want to hear what you think, too. Yeah. Uh, there's an issue Quiet about geez. how we, we've started to get, <laughs> we started to get review copies of stuff. We started to sort of see that whole side of, hey, do you guys want this? And and yeah, we, we do want that, but it doesn't, luckily for us, we sort of have a buffer. Yeah. They're not dealing directly with us right, with right. giving us stuff, but um, it, it's you mean about wine, the wine and dine? Is that what you're bringing up? Well, when I like was like when kid, you get wine and sorry. When I was young, yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't know if, how many people watch the show know this, but I used to review video games. Um, I used to write for a newspaper and review video games. And even then, which was early '90s, and it was you know very much the infancy of this this whole industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would get gifts as just some dumb kid. I was 14, 15 years old. I would get gifts like review our game. Here's a, here you know sweatshirts and all kinds of crazy yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. And it, you don't know, you kind of feel like, oh, wow, that's so nice. Yeah. You know, and you, you kind of have to divorce yourself from that that feeling of... of obligation. Obligation, yeah. Exactly. Well, what do yeah. you think, Dan? Well, I, I, you know, <clears throat> I think... I think everything affects you. 
Yeah. Everything affects your experience of something. Let's say art, because all this stuff is sort of our experiencing someone's thing that they made for us, their art that they made for us. So I'm a big, I'm anal, super anal about going to movies. I have to sit in the middle. I have to sit in the best seat that for me because if I'm not sitting in that seat, the whole time I'm thinking, I wonder what this would be like if I was sitting in a better seat. If the huh. sound isn't that good, I'm like, well, maybe I would like this more if I was really feeling this explosion, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. When I'm playing a game, if, I, if I'm playing with friends or by myself, I feel like that affects my experience. If I'm playing with two people that don't like it and, you know, I'm listening to Steve Martin's comedy thing, and he's, and he's a comedy book that he wrote about stand-up, and he's like talking about when one guy laughs at your joke, it validates the performer, and people then yeah. are cued to know that this is funny. Right. Even if you didn't find it funny then, you know that this is supposed to be funny. So mm. that being said, when you're given gifts, I think it's I think it's like sort of you now look at this company in a better like you're like wow they're being they're they're thinking about they're catering to me when celebrities go to parties and they get gift bags of products they're like oh that's cool they're they're they think you know, the party promoters they want to go to the next party because the guy the party promoters like give them like it's right. it's, they're, it's cool it's yeah. nice of them so but i think that is given to them under the condition that it's not like they're bribing them right it's not like you now need to come to our next party right. it's that we do this enough that some people will think of us in a better light that we will, yeah. you know? And I think that's okay. That's, that's how we are in speech with one another. We yeah. give, pay each other compliments, you know? Yeah. That's just sort of human behavior. Yeah. I think, in the, like, tying in back to the Gertzman thing, you know, I find it, I think it's standard practice. If he did get fired based off of a negative, I, I find that far-fetched. I, I just think mm -hmm. that that's a site where they've given many negative reviews. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure this happened on a day where there was tons of for Kane and Lynch, and but I think that that no one's guaranteed a pot. I mean, unless that is how they operate, and that's I guess what people are debating that they guarantee them a good score. That they'll well, get think a good guaranteed score, but anything, but that, it's like if you have this cause and effect of like, well, we have hundreds of thousands of dollars of advertising, yeah. and then we pull that, it's like, well, we don't want to lose that money, so in the, in the future, we're not going to allow. A negative thing to happen to something that's giving us a lot of money. The thing that that's I, hard, yeah. Yeah, the thing that I want to say just really quick because the reason I brought up the whole like when I was a kid and the infancy of the yeah. of the industry is that this whole gaming industry was built on uh, sort of hobbyists and yeah. young kids yeah. and and a lot, of, especially the enthusiast press. It's not kids who have journalism degrees, right? You know, it's people like us who are just really into it and yeah. want to communicate that to other people and sort of get into that. Yeah. Business, so they sort of don't have the mindset of a journalist of like you don't accept things. You well, don't I don't, I don't. I'm not going to. I'm not accusing anybody of having the mm. wrong mindset or anything. Right. I'm just saying it's interesting that I still even now think of video game industry as it's like I just. I'm just talking about what I like, and it, it really is a multi-billion-dollar right, industry yeah. with people whose careers are made yeah. or or broken yeah. based on. Some kid yeah, like yeah. us or yeah. like me when I was fourteen, you yeah. know, who says your game's a six, yeah. you know, and then that is taken as law, and then people who don't read well, the review just look at a number. In, in a couple of the articles, they talked about two human, right? And what oh, happened Dennis with Dyack's that? Yeah, what happened with that and his whole sort of the end of E three, really, what yeah. it was, you know, and that's it's just a weird. We're in a weird industry. Yeah. Talking about video games. I mean, it's just. I would love to see what, what people on the forums have to yeah. say because it's a really interesting topic, and I've been following it. If you want to read, I would suggest reading N. Guy Kroll on Newsweek. Uh, his Level Up blog is really interesting, and he's talking about it, you know, in a really educated yeah. and uh, objective way. And so, I'd love to see what people think in the forums. Anyway, yeah, cool. Rock and roll. Well, it's that time to break forth the rhythm. Also, uh, lyrically correct. Sentence endings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's time for our sponsors. We want to thank TradePub. If you head over to trs.tradepub.com, you can sign up for a plethora, to quote three amigos, of uh, uh, amazing trade publications for free. They've got PC Mag, Television Weekly, tons and tons and tons and tons. So go to trs.tradepub.com, head over there, subscribe to as many as you want. They're completely free and fun to read. My favorite thing is free and fun to read. Man, uh, um, I want to talk to you about GoDaddy.com. Let's hear it. Because they have domains as low as one ninety nine. Correct a minute. They have helpful start your design process software. Yes. Uh, it's great. If you want to register a domain, it's really cool. You can go over there. You can use our 
um, code, which is TRS1, TRS and the number one. Correct. Uh, and you'll get 10% off. They'll know that people watch our show and use their product, which is great for us. Always good for us. So help working. yourself, help us, nice. help Dan. We have a prompter now. Help prompters help Dan, everywhere. Help me. Yes. Help you help me. So uh, you should sign up to Netflix. If you haven't already signed up to Netflix, you're a douche and berg. Um, Which really? is uh, related, Which is related, to, you, related right? to me. Yeah, yeah they're the, the, the Duesenberg. Yeah, the yeah. British. You're saying the of only your people, you, you're, only people that you know that haven't yeah. signed up for Netflix are the Duesenberg. Are the Duesenberg? <laughs> yes. That's you right. wouldn't um, insult. You would never you really insult are, anyone. Huh? You, really, you're a, you really are. You really are. We're trying to say um, from insulting. Because you. Netflix has like shipment centers out the wazoo. That's right, like 40 or something around so, there? I wondered why my <laughs> my envelope smelled like wazoo. Yeah, so like, you know, whenever you need your DVD, when you when you have it at the top of your queue, it, it pops out like the next day. Uh, $4.99 and up. Unless you're Steve. Yeah. $4.99 and up is pretty darn cheap. <laughs> oh, 75,000 titles, mm -hmm. HD, DVD, and mm -hmm. Blu-ray, which mm -hmm. is rad. Um, Jeff and Alex can watch, actually we can all, you guys can all watch both. I can only watch Blu-ray with my PS3. Because I didn't buy the thing for the Let's Xbox. Let's get it to you for uh, um, <laughs> Oh, we have an email today, right? We do have an email oh, today. Boomsies. I thought I had to say more about Oh, yeah, Netflix. yeah. Where would they go to sign up? <laughs> www.netflix.com slash TRS. The WWWs are important. Always important. Always, always I important. I think that's it. All right, let's get to an email. This email comes to us from Adam Boyer. He says, hey, guys, I just started watching your podcast on recommendation from my brother's recommendation. He got recommended twice. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> and I decided that you guys are awesome. We've decided that you're awesome for emailing us, and we're now reading that question. Question is, how can I convince my mom that I am not breaking our family iMac every time I do something like install a new application or update iTunes New fan, Adam from Eagle River, Arkansas. Thank you, Adam. That's actually a really good question. Yeah, that's an awesome question. I don't know if you guys were this way growing up. I was always the computer guy. Yep. Um, and so I kind of, I, the good news is I didn't really have this kind of issue because my parents were just like, Psh, no idea, sir. And most of the time <laughs> the computers were like, I'd have a computer, but they would be like, not, you know, they'd have like a family computer that didn't really, I didn't, I wasn't on. Yeah. But I will say that my first computer I ever owned was an IBM PS1, uh, which was epic. And wow. the first thing that I did. I, I got you beat there, bro. Yeah. Well, the first thing that I did, well, I mean, that was the first one that I personally oh, owned. I we see. had like an Apple IIe and like a couple, like a Commodore and blah, blah, blah. But the one that was like mine, that they got me, right. and I was like, I can do what I want. My buddy's dad had Microsoft Flight Simulator. Mm. Oh, on one yeah, three yeah, and a half yeah, inch yeah. disc. <laughs> and so I said, let me borrow the discs. I have a new computer. Let's do this. Slammed it in with my buddy. We were like, ah, why is it not? What's it doing? What's it happening? Because I'd never dealt with an IBM before, a PC. Right. And so I was like, hmm. So I'm like looking through my menus, and I was like, maybe I need to format it. Maybe it's not formatted. Formatting the disc? Maybe it's not formatted for my no, PC. No, turn back. That it's, you know, it's, it's, it's formatted for your dad's PC. Let oh, me try that. boy. Format the disk. Oh. Then I go, well, that didn't seem to do anything. <laughs> Nothing got installed or anything. <laughs> then I looked and I went, hmm, uh, the files are gone <laughs> on the disk. Oh, okay, well, I, I guess it I've doesn't done work. I think I've that before, Handed too. it to my buddy, and I was like, I guess it just doesn't work on my computer. <laughs> Takes it back, gives it to his dad, and his dad, he called that's up, and he awesome. goes, so that Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't work anymore for my dad. And I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> It didn't work for me either. That's awesome. So really I can empathize with your mother <laughs> because my friend's father lost his whole Microsoft. So they felt like what he felt, which is like, if I give this to you, yeah. you may destroy yeah. everything. So I'm going to say I have no good advice <laughs> because I <laughs> did do helpful. that. Well, well, what about I, you guys? I, I feel you, Adam, because there, I have a few pet peeves. First of all, there's nothing worse in this world than trying to tell someone who doesn't know how to use a computer how to do something over the phone yes. on oh, a computer. Yeah. Yes. What's a Agreed. window? What's the desktop? So you're thinking he only talks to his mom what? over Menu. the phone? No, but I, I can relate because when I my parents have computer issues right. and, and I'm like just call I can't I can't do this guys yeah. I, can, I can't I cannot do this. I used to do that as a profession. Yeah, it's yeah. like dude. It's horrible. But while we're on this topic, wait 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 before you, who, wait, before you before you go on. Yes. The, there's also the flip side of how horrible that is is when. You as a knowledgeable computer oh, user yes. ever have to call customer Q2 support? Q2. And they just have this like menu of things yeah. that they have to say. Yeah. To oh, you it's like, like please, no, no, no. I, I tried that already. Please, come on. Yeah. Tier two. Talk to me like tier a human two. being. And they no, don't have the two. advice for you. Tier two is what you gotta say. Because they're two. tier one. I believe me, I know. Uh, you pick up the phone and go, 
I, I have a degree in computer science. I need tier two. <laughs> That's go, awesome. Uh, okay. That's awesome. Right. I've done That's your helpful. list. Go yeah. ahead. Go um, ahead. Um, we're actually helping people. But, yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> this is the greatest moment that we've had on our show. Um, That's important. Pet peeves, when people turn the computer <laughs> off true. after yeah. every, like, instance, you know, like, I'm going to turn the computer on th this morning. I'm going to send an email. I'm going to turn it off. Cut to an hour later. I'm going to turn the computer on again. Oh, wow. And, uh, why, why do you buzz that button? I have... Oh, because saving leave it the on. universe. They're no, saving it's, the world. it's actually better. That's not true. That's not true? It's not true. I don't know. I'm going to disagree with Jeff. I'm we need to say, call Patrick Norton. I'm going to say. Still, they just did, they just like did this. They really? like measured the amount of voltage. Yeah, we need to call, like, we need to, like. So you're supposed to, like, right? so every, you're not supposed to, like, leave your computer system on. System or something. It's a tech or system did that. No, no, no. There's no spostas. You got a case of the spostas. <laughs> No, that's, all, that's the coolest thing that's ever happened on the show. Well, I stole yeah. that from Simpsons. Yeah. Um, but well, Simpsons has done everything. Yeah. Simpsons did it. Um, yes, but no. So that's, anyway, but that just is a personal pet peeve. It doesn't cost well, any I'm more electricity Dushenberg. to boot up your computer you're than not a, You're not a Van Duschenberg. <laughs> you're living right. in the States. Anyway, Frankenberg. what's your advice for Adam? Good luck. We have to solve <laughs> this no, problem. No, no, you have a solution? Adam. I don't. That's what you guys Our family, I'm Max Bray every time. Every time you install a new computer. There's no... You can't do it. Because she thinks she knows, like, yo, you did this, you installed this thing and it's wrong. She's go eventually going to be told by, she's going to get a computer guy into yep. the house, yeah, or and girl. he's going to tell her what you told her, and then she's going to believe it. There's no, yeah. you have no control. Yeah. You she have no power. She clearly doesn't yes. believe you. Though she's, I'm sure, a very nice And mother. she might be proven right one time <laughs> Buy your because. Mom flowers. That, uh, that, well, that's the worst. That's why I started with mine is, is that computers break. That's what they do. And right. the, one time your computer breaks, all she's going to do is, why did you have to install that crap on the computer? Because right. clearly that's why the iMac broke. No, they just break. It's like cars. Right. Oh, well, speaking of which, some chick rear-ended me last night at the freaking. I know. That happened. And Dan was no, no. there. And that happened to Jeff, and I was behind. I, I, I forgot to tell you, tell you that. Yeah, he's the weirdest thing. Destiny. I have this weird curse on me. I went Don't to the drive near me. Don't drive near I was me. behind Jeff and a guy. Oh, you told me about thing. that. Yeah. And then last night, leaving another movie theater, some chick rear ends out. And he gets out of the car. And I'm like, he's on the phone or something. You get out of the car. You look at your thing, and you look at her, and you're like, it's fine, whatever. And then you're like, I was like, wow, you don't exchange insurance. I was like, well, the, my bumper was fine. I know. That car has been through so much. A biker hit me. It's crazy. Anyway, Adam, Thanks, good Adam. luck <laughs> uh, with the question that we circumvented. <laughs> All right. If you'd like to have a question circumvented on the show, please <laughs> Or if feel you'd like free. to rear-end Alex. Or if you'd like to rear-end me, I'll give you my <laughs> oh. license plate number via email. And then it'll be sort of like pain, the, the TV show, because I have a camera. Uh, but if you'd like to have a question danced around on the show, please feel free to send it to fans at totallyradshow.com. That's also where you would send us awesome or rad backgrounds like, like our Lex. buddy Lex did. Correct. Um, you can download Lex's background. Every week we have our background of the week. You can download if you want to use it for your personal wallpaper or any other thing Fun you need thing. to use that for. Sock you can download... Um, uh, templates yep. for sending us backgrounds yep. all at our website totallyradshow.com it's also where you, you can go and uh, join our forums correct. where there is a thriving community of awesome people just waiting to interact with you and yours correct the mundo uh, also on the website is a little rad recommendations bar where you can buy sh stuff that we uh, now we stop saying that stuff. word I don't know I just felt like I'm <laughs> so abrasive if I say it right now <laughs> yeah, um, yeah call people like, Duesenberg's right. not the, yeah. Yeah. Go um, where you buy some of the stuff that we've mentioned on the show for instance the Golden Compass book oh, yeah? you could pick up uh, about a boy because it's the greatest movie ever I'm also going to say right now in light of the Speed Racer trailer if you've never seen Bound which is the Wachowski's first movie oh, and yeah. I know a lot of you guys out there love the Matrix Bound first of all Bound is the Matrix hot with lesbian lesbians. kiss <laughs> second of all it amazing it, the, the photography the way it's, you will love it it's awesome Joe Pantoliano if you guys fans of yep. him from like yep. he's in Soprano yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe Pants awesome 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 yeah. Good times. And myspace.com slash totally rad show to right. find out the movie that we review. Time. And Netflix. Awesome. <laughs> uh, also, head over to revision3.com and check out a whole slew of other shows. Like Techzilla like and Techzilla System, System, whichever just, one they just covered. Teased. Uh, well, that's it for this week's edition of the Totally Rad Show. I'm Alex Albrecht. I'm Jeff Kanata. I'm Dan Trachtenberg. Until next time. Rad it up! Wind, fire, all things, all that kind of thing. Oh, this is my line? <laughs> 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 the Army and Navy.
and the battles they won. Ah, shit. Okay. To America's colors, the colors that never leave. <laughs> to America's colors, like the covers that never. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh fuck me. Fuck. Here's to the army and navy. <laughs> fuck. I'm gonna toast you right now, brother. <laughs> Don't spill! English went all over again! <laughs> oh, and at the end, at the end of this... <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like, why are you spilling this like much gonna... water? What is this problem? <laughs> it smiles and funny. I'm laughing. I think it's funny. Well, they're all laughing. I'm trying to be honest right now. Here's to the Army and Navy and the battles they won. Mm -hmm. One more time. Army and Navy and the battles that. <laughs> oh my god. Here's to the Army and Navy and the battles that they fought. <laughs> to America's colors. <laughs> New chest. Oh, you're I so close. You it's like four seconds of your life. It really okay. is. I know. It's you so can do it night. Why night. is this? I, I know. Everybody does it. It's cool. so everybody, weird. Everybody poops. Okay. It's like I can't, my mouth doesn't open <laughs> to enunciate words. I'm gonna laugh a couple more times, but then I'm gonna get it, so stop. It's cool. Alright, here we go. Fuck! I hate it! I, it hurts! Mm, it, it's like, actually, I feel like it's, I can't. Alright. Here's to the Army and Navy. I looked at the camera. Here's to the Army and Navy. I'm not together, and I'm saying it already. I really needed you to be there for me. <laughs> Steve, don't include this part. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting this. Yeah. Am I like red and no, like... No, you look great. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Come on, Dan. Fuck. Here's to the Army and Navy and the battles they've won. To America's... No, because it's here still. Hold on. Okay. Here's to the Army and Navy and the battles they've won. <laughs> Here's, Here's to the, the Army and Navy and the, and the battles they've they won. won. Here's to the, fuck, fuck, fuck. Here's to America's colors, the colors that never fucking oh. Thank God it's not like eight lines, right?